Hi, it's Maya here with my favorite books of 2019. I did not give out any five star ratings to any new reads in 2019. I gave out five star ratings only to two rereads, and those were The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin and Courtney Crumery and the Coven of Mystics by Ted Nathy. I'm not going to talk about those rereads here in any length. I'm just going to move straight on to the books that I read the first time in 2019. My number one place got 4.5 stars and the rest of the books in this video got four stars. So first I'm going to mention some honorable mentions. These are not in any particular order. I have my top four in ranked order, but these books are just some that I enjoyed in 2019. First I have Kissing the Witch Old Tales in New Skins by Emma Donahue. This is a collection of fairy tale retellings where the stories are linked so that uh, the new story always has one character incorporated from the previous one. This was the first book that I read in 2019 and it has really stuck with me. I liked how it focused on uh, women and I read this book in one sitting, which is very rare for me. I especially liked how the Beauty and the Beast linked with Snow White and how Donkey Skin linked with Sleeping Beauty. Then I have A Small Charred Face by Kazuki Sakuraba and this is a Japanese vampire book that consisted of three interconnected tales and the first one where two vampires take in and raise this human boy after his family is killed was my favorite. Even though it had some dark um, elements in it, I found it very heartwarming. I just loved following this uh, vampire family, these supernatural beings trying to take care of a human child with human needs. Then I have How the Best Hunter in the Village Met Her Death by Molly Ostertag. This is a short fancy comic which I read back to back two times when I read it and I thought about it a lot after finishing it and it's about a hunter who goes after a beast and she's obsessed with it and feels it changing her. I will put a Gumroad link in the description if you want to check this out. Then I have East of the Sun and West of the Moon edited by Noel Daniel with illustrations by Kay Nielsen and this is a restored reprint of a fairy tale collection from the 1910s uh, of Norwegian fairy tales with new scans of most of the art. This one was basically just a fun read. There was this weird and wild inner logic in these fairy tales. They were very much like out there. I didn't quite get the inner logic at times, which made for a very interesting read, and Kay Nielsen's art is very beautiful. On number four, before we get to the top three, is the Delicious in Dungeon manga series by Ryoko Kui. I read volumes two to seven this year, with six being my favorite. Six actually got 4.5 stars, while the rest got four or 3.5 stars. This is such a fun comedic fantasy cooking manga about the group of adventurers who are exploring a dungeon, but they run out of food and money, so they eat the monsters that they kill. And one of them is very excited about this, the knight on the cover here. He has always wanted to eat monsters, basically. They also have this cooking expert, and then the two other people in the adventurous uh, group aren't really feeling the whole thing. When I read these volumes, I laugh out aloud like multiple times. Ryoko Kui is great with comedic beats, and her drawing style is really magnificent. The lines are so clear, and the characters are so expressive. So now we're at the top three. On number three, I have How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemisin. This is a collection of short stories. Uh, they are science fiction and fantasy short stories. I am not a big short story collection reader, but this is N.K. Jemisin, and it was that tried and true Jemisin quality. My absolute favorites were the science fiction story The Evaluators and Red Dirt Witch, which was this historical story with the Fae. On number two, I have The Signet Duology. Those are The Sorcerers and the Signet, and The Signet and the Firebird by Patricia A. McKillip. And this is a lyrical fantasy duology from the 90s. McKillip's prose is just something else. I really enjoy just reading it. And in these books, I also fell in love with the Sorceress Nyx, who is the sorceress who just wants knowledge more than anything. The first book is told from the point of view of Corlo, who is this man who is on a quest to try to save his traveling troop, and he meets Nyx on the way. And then another point of view character of that book is Meget, who is Nyx's cousin. But in this second book, the point of view characters are Nyx and Meget, which is why I love this book more than the first one. Even though I often find MacKillip's endings a bit confusing, the beautiful prose just makes up for all that. And on number one, my favorite read of the year was The Dark Fantasy Night's Master by Tanith Lee. This is from the series The Tales from the Flat Earth. It is a collection of intertwined tales and mythology from this world, and I was just living for it. The Demon Prince Arsaran is my favorite character of the year, alongside with Nyx from the MacKillip books that I just talked about. And this story is just completely captivated me with this fairy tale like tone and being this large story if of this whole world told in short snippets where a single story could work perfectly on its own but also tie into the bigger whole. 
Even though there were some outdated elements from this book from the 70s that I talked more about in my November Reads and Receipts, I loved this book. So these were my favorite books that I read in 2019. Let me know in the comments what your favorite books were or if you have read any of these. But that's all from me for now and I'll see you in my next video.